You know, nothing screams October quite like seeing Christmas trees up for sale in October at Target. Hey party people, from me and my new beauty mark and the three eyelash extensions on each of my eyes that are clinging on to dear life. You know, Halloween is creeping upon us and what better way to close out Halloween than to read creepy Reddit stories that are non-life threatening and have a happy ending. Am I right? Let's go ahead and get started. So the first story that I have to present to you comes from the Reddit thread, Creepy Encounters. And it is titled, Weird Guy Shows Up at My Parents' House at 1am Looking for Me and Using Details of My Life That Were Valid 20 Years Ago. A couple grammatical errors. I don't like the title. And it's not for grammatical reasons. This happened three nights ago and I'm going crazy trying to figure it out. I just moved into a new apartment one month ago and I'm still unpacking and settling in. I have been using my parents' address as my mailing address, who live a few towns over 20 minutes away all of my life. Three nights ago, my parents call me at 2am, freaked out, and proceed to tell me the story. I don't like this. Apparently at 1am, someone starts banging on their front door and repeatedly ringing their doorbell. My stepdad walks downstairs and opens the door, leaving the front glass door closed and locked. Hell yeah, keep the glass door closed. There was a man standing outside who looked to be in his 30s with a black hoodie on with the hoodie pulled up around his face. He didn't have any distinguishing facial features, facial hair, or tattoos. The only thing my stepdad said was that he looked to be Hispanic. Neither my stepdad or my mother, who was watching the whole thing out a window, recognized the man. Honestly, I don't even like it when people I know knock on my door, period. So the man says, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for my full name. My stepdad plays dumb and says, who? The man proceeds to state my full name again and says that my boyfriend is worried because I didn't come home that night. What? He claims to be a friend of my boyfriend and tells my stepdad that they are both out looking for me, worried because I didn't show up home. I don't have a boyfriend. I live by myself with my three dogs and haven't been in a relationship in the past five or six months. Here's the weird part. My stepdad asked the guy what boyfriend he was talking about and the man tells him the name of my boyfriend I had when I was in 10th grade nearly 20 years ago. My boyfriend in the 10th grade has a very, very unique Italian name. I've never met anyone with a full name even close to his. He says my high school boyfriend's name a few more times to ensure my stepdad heard him and repeats that they are very worried about me. And is my stepdad sure I'm not inside? At this point, my stepdad is weirded out and closes and locks the door in his face. Yes. The man does not leave. He lingers in front of my house for the next 10 minutes, smoking cigarettes and talking on the phone. You know, smoking on someone else's property is like, the rudest thing. Finally, my parents call the cops. About five minutes before the cops arrive, the man walks down the dead end on their block and drives away in a silver car. Stepdad was unable to get the license plate. My parents file a police report and nothing else happens. You know, I hear so many stories where people file police reports and nothing ever happens. After I hear the story, I'm going nuts over the weird details. How would someone know who I dated nearly 20 years ago? And what would the motive be of making up a story that included that weird detail about my past? I have not had contact with the 10th grade boyfriend in over a decade. And yesterday I decided to message him on Facebook to see if he has any insight. I tell him the whole story. He's just as confused as I am and claims to have no part in it. I am at a loss. I'm also really freaked out that some strange man is going through that much trouble at 1 a.m. to look for me. Any insights or ideas would be greatly appreciated. No, nothing else else weird has happened since then. <laughs> We're off to a strong start, everyone. I'm already freaked out. There are a couple updates in the story, but then none of them kind of resolve anything. So this is like the worst cliffhanger in all of history because I hate cliffhangers. <sighs> What makes it even weirder is that like he stayed afterwards to smoke a cigarette out in the front yard. Like, haven't you learned anything about secondhand smoke? All right, let's go ahead and uh, so this next story is also a part of the Reddit thread, Creepy Encounters, and it's titled, Watch Your Kids in the Stores. I can't tell you how many times my stupid ass as a kid wandered off in a store and my parents had to like go find me. I'm young. I mean, I'm 30, so I'm kind of young, but I see this little girl at Walmart not too long ago running around in the toy aisles. She must have ran past me four or five times, and every time she did, a man would be right behind her on her tail. For some reason, I could feel something was off. I stopped the little girl and asked her if she was lost. She said yes. I said this man isn't your daddy, and with almost tears in her eyes, she looked at him and slowly looked back at me and said, no. I hate this story already. I grabbed her by the hand and told her we were going to go up to the front to have them call for her mommy as the man was in our aisle. I gripped her a little harder when we walked past him and went to the front of the store. Walking right past the man, looking him straight in the eye, and he just kind of gave me the side smirk that till today makes the hair raise on my entire body. Ew. Had I not stopped that little girl and brought her to the front to find her mom, I'm genuinely scared to know what would have happened to her. Seriously, people who have way too much time to be fantasizing about what they would do with kids need to get a fucking job. If you're curious what happened to the child, the poster actually responded in one of the comments. Oh my god, so I got up to the front and and 
they called out over the loudspeaker about the little girl who was lost. Thank God she knew her mom's first and last name. Surprisingly, a lot of kids don't know their parents' first and last name, so if you have a kid, tell them your name. She couldn't have been more than four or five. When her mother got to the front, she was in tears. She hugged me and thanked me over and over again. I let her know about the man and why I took her to the front, and I believe the lady spoke with the manager about the man. I left after I knew the little girl was safe, but her mother was losing her mind looking for her. You could see the sheer terror in her eyes when she ran up front. On the bright side, the kid got home and it was a nice story ending. Now our next story is a part of this Reddit thread called Let's Not Meet, where it talks about a bunch of creepy encounters that might've happened in the past, might've happened online, but they don't ever wanna meet this person ever again. The title of the story is called, I posted about my stalker on Reddit and he found it. Oh girl, here we go. Quick backstory, I've had a stalker for about four years. He was never aggressive or sent me proper threats. So stubborn as I am, I did my best to ignore him and not to give him the satisfaction of showing him any fear. To be honest, after a while, I also wasn't scared anymore since he almost never came close to me. I know being stalked can affect people severely even in a case like mine and that's totally valid, but I guess I just got lucky and was never really psychologically affected by it. His stalking behavior mostly just consisted of sending me letters and gifts, such as photos of my own apartment building from the outside, things he dug up out of my trash can and so on. I called the police many times, but they weren't able to or really tried to be honest to catch him or identify him. So about three weeks ago, I discovered the German version of this other Reddit thread and I thought people might want to know what it's like to have a stalker. Since I barely use any social media aside from Reddit and have no personally identifying information here, I don't think he'd ever see it. One person even asked, does he know you're putting him on blast on Reddit? And I answered, maybe. Maybe it would make him angry. Maybe he'd be turned on. Don't know, don't care. Well, I know the real answer now. He did see it and he did not like it. Like I said, he was never aggressive and never came close to me. The closest I know of was when he sent me a picture of myself unlocking my apartment door taken from the corner of the steps above. Sorry if this makes no sense, I don't know how else to explain it, but I consider myself a pretty vigilant person and I'm thinking that he might have hit a camera there instead of being there to take the photo himself. I think I would have noticed him if he did. You never know, girl. I don't know how he got wind of the AMA, but he did. The next week was quiet, no letters, and I didn't see him anywhere. Then he left me letters with printed out questions and my answers from the AMA. He also left me a long hateful letter towards my boyfriend about an issue I had posted on the German version of Am I the Asshole. His letters were never hateful like that before, though he never seemed happy with my boyfriend. He wrote about how I should share the spotlight with him since I got so much attention thanks to him. Bro, I got the chills. A few days later, I got a gift, but this time he didn't leave it in my mailbox or at my car like he usually did. No, this time he left it inside the apartment building right in front of my door. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I didn't take it inside my apartment, but opened it outside. It was a pretty big box, which is also unusual and it was taped shut. As I'm typing it out, I realized it wasn't a good idea at all and could have ended badly for me, but luckily he didn't send me a bomb or anything. He did, however, send me several zip ties, a roll of tape, the kind you use to tape off walls when painting, nothing you could use to restrain anyone, a TV remote with most buttons picked off, a pack of band-aids with a few used ones, not actually just made to look that way according to the police, and a framed picture of me. I could tell the picture was taken a few days ago and my boyfriend was next to me, but cut out of the photo. The frame was shattered and the package was full of glass shards, clearly more than just what could have fallen out of the frame. And they were also intentionally put inside the crumpled newspaper that was stuffed in there to keep it all in place. I called the police right away and gave it to them. They were more concerned this time, finally, thanks, and told me they'd send patrol cars more frequently. How were the police not concerned about this in the first place? He didn't show up or leave me any letters or gifts for about another week and a half, but eight days ago, it started again. I found letters in my mailbox where he wrote about how he wasted his time on me, how I haven't been appreciating his effort and how wrong he was about me being special. Then stop. Five days ago, I left my apartment in the morning and heard a crunch sound as I stepped on my doormat. He put broken glass under it in the night. I went off to work because I was in a hurry and was just going to make my boyfriend call the police, but then I found my car had also been vandalized. The sides were scratched, lights smashed, and the windshield had a phrase panted on. It's time soon, miss my last name. I went back inside and called the cops myself. They found the same phrase on a note under the doormat. This time, they really, really took me seriously. Seriously, which might have been because I was just pissed at this point, which I made very clear. If for some reason you're like me and just too stubborn to be afraid of a stalker like mine, then all of this, the letters, gifts, photos, even the damn glass under my doormat are just really annoying and inconvenient. Girl, you're so brave. But my car was useless to me now and the threat scared even me. I did, however, have a dash cam in my car. Ooh, 
That's good. And it caught everything. The police took the footage as evidence, even though the dash cam footage wasn't of high quality. And I had given them photos of him that were just as good before, but they said it's not enough. Damn. And they told me they'll look into it further and promise to send more patrol cars again. Then it was quiet for two more days. Someone rang the doorbell at just after 4 a.m. Why does everything happen at 4 a.m.? My boyfriend and I got up, but we were both hesitant, but saw blue lights outside. And just as I got up, I heard them shouting, this is the police, please open the door. They told us they were called by one of our downstairs neighbors who came came home from his night shift about an hour earlier and heard someone else enter the building after them before they fell the door shut. My neighbors know of my situation and I've asked them to make sure they don't let strangers into the building. This neighbor then went into his own apartment and looked through the peephole. We have motion activated lights in the stairway, so he waited to see if they turned back on. They did. Then he saw a middle-aged man walk upstairs. Above this neighbor are only me and my boyfriend and a single mom with three kids who probably won't be getting any visitors at 3 a.m. So he called the police. They came and found my stalker one half floor above me on the stairs. He should have been able to see the cop car since there's a little window up there and they had their lights on, but he either missed them or wanted to get caught. They found a pocket knife on him and he confessed to being my stalker right away. He's finally caught. They got him. It took four years and a provocative Reddit post and one very vigilant and caring neighbor, but he's finally done for now at least. He's facing several charges and I've collected every single piece of evidence over the past four years. I don't know what kind of outcome I can expect, but for now, I finally got some peace. Good for her. But damn, it took the police four years to figure out who this guy was? On the bright side, she gave us a really nice edit that I think all of you would be relieved to hear. Edit number two, I already wrote this in a comment, but I genuinely cannot stop thinking about about it. Today at 9.30 p.m. for the first time in over a year, I took out the trash by myself in the dark. My boyfriend always did it just to be safe, but today I had nothing to worry about. And I just want to bring this up real quick because a lot of women actually live in fear. The ability to do things late at night without the fear of being taken or being caught or being kidnapped or just assaulted, that's a privilege that not a lot of women have. And so let's make it our mission to be better so that everyone can live in a peaceful and safe world. So all of the stories have been pretty good so far, and by good, I mean spooky. So um, the next story that I have for you is going to be our last story, because it is a pretty long story, to be fair. Let's go ahead and jump in. This story is also a part of the Let's Not Meet Reddit thread, and it's titled The Man Across the Street. <sighs> All right, this happened to me about three years ago. It was brought up recently with my friends and they suggested that I posted it here. I have gone through therapy for this and trained in firearms because this was the creepiest night of my life. Hate that you had to go through that, sis, but I support you. I spent a night in what felt like a horror movie and it's still so vivid. It was a Wednesday night in summer. I was off work and my husband was out of town and our son was staying at his grandma's for the night. I was home alone with my dogs, an 80 pound Aussie mix and my 80 pound German Shepherd slash Pitbull mix. I always have issues sleeping when I'm home alone so I tend to just binge watch TV in the living room until I can't keep my eyes open anymore. This particular night, I remembered that the trash pickup comes the next day. I decided to turn on Game of Thrones for a bit, then I would take the trash out. All of a sudden, I realized it's 1.30 a.m. and I still haven't taken the trash to the curb. Always do it in the daytime, girl. My house has two solid iron gates, one in the front and one in the side door slash backyard. Lighting on our street or anywhere in our neighborhood isn't that great, but it's a quiet neighborhood with a lot of families and you rarely hear about crime here. I looked out the window by habit before I took out the trash and saw who I thought was my neighbor smoking a cigarette outside of his gate across the street looking directly at me. For context, this is a normal occurrence. My neighbor across the street hides smoking cigarettes from his wife, so he typically does it late at night in the front of his gate. I get off work late so I usually see him and we wave, say hi, chat a little, and then I go inside and he makes a joke, you didn't see me smoking if my wife asks. So unbothered by seeing the guy, I go outside, grab my trash cans, open my squeaky iron gate and take them out to the curb. I did not have my glasses on at the time so as usual I waved and said hello. However, the guy who I thought was my neighbor threw down the cigarette and quickly walked off the street. It took a minute for me to register that he was not my neighbor. I was a little creeped out because he was clearly staring into my window from the opposite sidewalk, but also maybe it was a guy taking a night walk walk, not unusual in our neighborhood, and just stopped for a cigarette. I thought I probably weirded him out as much as he weirded me out, went back inside, and laid on the couch with my dogs to keep watching the Game of Thrones. At some point, I fell asleep, and I woke up hearing my gate squeak and my German Shepherd mix growling. 
He's extremely protective of our family at home, but he's also the kind of dog you could take anywhere because he's so friendly in public. My Aussie mix is more passive, but his sheer size and scary bark tends to deter people. He's very friendly though. I quickly got up and pulled back my curtain. My gate was still shut and I didn't see anything. My dog, however, continued to growl at my front door. I looked out another window, which had a better view of my front yard and porch. I didn't see anything. Eventually, my dog settled back down with my other dog, but I was still uneasy. I ended up watching TV again because I couldn't go back to sleep. About an hour later, I definitely heard my gate squeak. <laughs> We are the only ones with a heavy cast iron gate and the noise it makes is so distinct. So I look out the curtain while my dogs are continuing to softly growl. My gate is halfway open, but I don't see anyone. I swear this is like straight out of like the purge or whatever. At this point, I'm panicking. In my panic, I couldn't find my phone. I grabbed my wooden baseball bat out of our room, crouched down and started going through the couch cushions to get my phone. My dogs are oddly still quietly growling instead of barking. So I assumed no one was there. The minute I find my phone, my front door handle starts shaking. Shaking. Oh my god. I run to the side door to let my German Shepherd mix out. I know he'll protect me and he can jump the six feet back gate. My Aussie mix going crazy busts out one of our door side lights. I heard the guy say, oh shit. And immediately I let out my German Shepherd mix. I jumped up to look out the window, saw my dog latch on the guy's hands. The guy starts screaming and takes off down the street, my dog chasing him. I then become terrified he'll hurt my dog. So I run out with my baseball bat, screaming my dog's name over and over. The next thing I know, my dog is prancing down the street back to me, happy as shit with blood all over his face. He was a good dog. I call the police. They took another hour or so to show up and didn't seem to take me too seriously. They said they'd call local hospitals, but I never heard back. I called my husband bawling and he got on the next flight home. Poor girl probably has like PTSD or whatever. I stayed at his mom's for a few days, too terrified to go home. I did buy my dog's giant ribeyes for being so good and for saving me. I don't know what that guy wanted, but since then I've been trained in firearms and self-defense. So Creepy guy, let's not meet because my dog might finish the job he started. Mm. Mm. Good for you, girl. This is exactly why I want a pit bull. And you know, a lot of people are like scared of pit bulls because they like eat you or something. But um, I feel like I could train a pit bull. Although I'm pretty sure that all those pit bull owners who had pit bulls that turned bad thought the same exact thing. So who am I to judge? Ah, all right, everyone, and that concludes our final round of deliciously, scrumptiously spooky, spooky stories for this Halloween. For those of you who are going trick-or-treating on Halloween night, make sure that you have a parent with you if you are not older than 18, but if you are, still have a parent with you because it is a wild, wild world out there. I hope you all have a wonderful and safe and fun and safe Halloween, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.